I'd like to welcome Shannon Walker. Shannon is a, I guess, friend of ICMJ. He, he's on a smoking team. He works at Black Bear Barbecue. He teaches at TAFE. He does a lot of different things. So welcome, Shannon. And Shannon's got a um, Black Bear offsider with him, so he's there driving the camera for us. So thanks, guys, for joining us today. And Shannon, thank you. What have, what have we got in store for us today? Uh, good day, people. How are we going? Um, so I'm here at Black Bear Vineyard. Um, today we're going to do some a bit of smoking and some meat. Um, but I might just give you a quick tour of the restaurant before I get started. We've done some renovations recently. Uh, we're based in Sydney, probably 15 minutes from Castle Hill, 15 minutes from Windsor, so right in between. So let's go turn the phone around. And this is our newly set up little butcher shop that we've, we've got. We've got a little pre-pack area, a little freezer, um, a selection of Victoria Knox knives, which are the only knives I use, uh, dry aged fridge. Over here in production, we've got a six metre open flame grill where we're going to have a pig on a spit. Uh, we're going to have hanging tomahawks, hang, hanging pineapples. We're going to cook our burgers, our steaks over on this grill once it's complete. We've got some of the staff here working very hard, Ben and Chop. Um, so we're just going into the restaurant area now. We're just closed for the day. So here's our little service area, full, full range on the menu board. Beautiful picture of some good looking butcher in the background. And then we'll just go out here where all the hard work gets done. And this is our little baby smoker that we use on a daily basis. So we can hold about 84 briskets there. Um, and this time of the year, we're actually doing two cooks so pretty much going 24 hours. So I'll just head so back Shannon, in there. Shannon, you said, said 84 briskets. How many Christmas hams does that hold? Uh, quite a few. Probably probably about 60 hams. We've got to take a few shelves out because the hams are a bit bigger. Okay, cool. Okay, oh, and, they're so happy, aren't they? <laughs> I guess what's unique about Black Bear is, it is it's a barbecue restaurant, sort of American-style barbecue restaurant, but they've... Um, put in the new butcher shop that I understand you're running. So you can supply sort of all your everyday meat products, but anything specific to sort of um, That's right, yeah. We, we, we do specialise in the low and slow cuts, but we make a full range of sausages here, a uh, few little gourmet products, and pretty much whatever they want, we can, you know, we can get. So right. we sold out of Christmas hams in two weeks. We you know, sold a large number of hams. Um, we just got our new sauce range, which has just come in. And we've got our rubs, which have been going really good for about the last 18 months. And my special friend's rubs are also available. <laughs> Another friend of ICMJ, Jess Pryles. That's right, Jess Pryles. Awesome. So, so, so we want to like... hand the phone yep. back to shop. Yep. Spin it around. Spin it it looks like you've got a pretty nice brisket there. Do you want to run us through specs on that brisket and what you're going to do, I guess? Yeah, so we've got our Angus Reserve brisket here. So I'm just going to trim it up how we trim it up in the in the shop here. Um, there's many different ways that you can trim it. Um, at home, you probably wouldn't take as much off as we do here, but we yep. utilise that trim for our burgers. So we're cooking over 648 burgers a week here. Okay. Um, it's quite incredible, actually. Yep. So, Shannon, Angus Reserve is a brand out of NH Foods. Um, it looks correct, like yes. that's probably one of their big ones, so out of Oki. So, uh, Grant Coleman, another supporter of ICMJ and so is NH Foods, and, and Grant's on the smoking bandwagon as well. Yes, yes. Um, Grant's a good friend of ours here at Blackbeard too. Uh, these briskets are probably ranging about the 9 to 11 kilo mark. Um, if you do want to do a brisket, talk to your butcher, get them to buy it in for you. Yep. The normal briskets aren't big enough. Yep. So, so we, we're looking for something that's got a fair bit of marble in it and a fair bit of size, aren't we, that can take the take the time in the smoker to, to right. break down all yeah. that collagen and elastin. Yep. 100%. This is just a grass-fed brisket, like, you know, the, the grain-fed and the waggers are, are also, you know, really good briskets, but, yeah, we, we use these ones here. Perfect. Okay, so without further ado, I'm going to give it a little trim up. Okay, so it's, it's going to steal our knife. So what we've got here is what we call the hump. So I'm just going to remove the hump, just like so. That way we just get a nice even surface. So when we're cooking for 12 hours, we want to get it nice and even. 
On the side of our brisket here, we've got a little bit of flat meat, which is a little bit skinnier than the, the main part of the brisket. So we'll just remove that. And then we go around here. There's not much trimming to be done on this one, but any of the hard fat you want to remove. The soft fat's okay, but the hard fat, we just want to just take that off. Put in a little bit of fat on there. We do trim up a little bit heavier here. As I said, we do use it for the, for the patties. So, Shen, when you said um, the hump, that's that, you know, we've got a lot of people on here that know their, their cattle. We're not technically talking like a Brahmin hump. It's just what the colloquial term we use in barbecue for that sort of lumpy point on that point end brisket, isn't it? That that's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 100%. Good stuff. So, what we'll do now, we'll just slip it over. And once again, this brisket's very well trimmed. They come, you know, the processing plants have been doing a really good job of late. And, um, they know what we want. Now, we are cooking over 1.2 tonne of brisket here a week. So we go through quite a, quite a bit of brisket. That's a few boxes. It is a few boxes. So we're just going to spread that up a little bit. Okay, we'll leave a little bit of this base fat on there. Don't be afraid to tackle a full brisket at home yourself. Maybe if you're going to go, you know, a small number of people you're cooking for, cook the whole brisket. Because I'll tell you a bit later some of the ways that we can utilise the leftovers. So if you're going to go to that trouble of lighting the smoker or the barbecue or even the oven in some cases, cook a little bit more than you need. You know, I said you're going to that effort, so let's utilise that product. So what we do with this now, we'll just rub it with our, our beef rub. Okay, we've got some secret ingredients in our beef rub, salt and pepper. Giving all the trade secrets away. <laughs> okay, but we've got the right formula and the, and the right size of the salt and the pepper. So we, a lot of effort and research has gone into utilizing getting the right product here. So I'm not going to actually do this because I'm not going to cook this till tomorrow. So a lot of, a lot of the myth is uh, rub your brisket the night before to get the flavour in. We, we try and do it just before we put it in the smoker um, because we, tend, we find the salt will, will dry, dry a lot of the moisture out. So just... If you ever get a rubby, any type of meat, marinate you can is fine, a wet marinate, but with brisket, the dry rub, just do it just before you put it in the smoker. So and we'll just sprinkle that over from a height and we'll just cover that brisket evenly. We'll turn it over and we'll do the same on the bottom. Okay, that's Shannon, just create a really nice bark. Shannon, um, is that blend got kosher salt in it? We know kosher salt's thrown around a fair bit in the barbecue world. I can't tell you all my secrets. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, but it has. Okay. It has. So with the magic of television, is it television? No, it's not. Yep. Um, we, we're going to get a cooked brisket now, and we're going to get our head pit master in. I'll introduce you to Ben when he arrives, and um, and he'll just go through the process of the cooking. And, and also slicing a brisket is very important. It's not just a matter of slicing it from left to right or right to left. Um, ben will explain that a little bit more. Great. Stuff. Clean up my bench for him. Yeah. Um, We've if been going for about five minutes, but I don't think I've told a joke yet, but I will. Oh, <laughs> I was just going to tell the crowd too, um, if there's any anyone listening in that has questions, please utilise that chat box function and, and I can relay any question questions through to Shannon. So um, there's a uh, little comment here from one of our committee members, Shannon Curie. You're full of secrets and magic, Shannon. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Full of secrets and magic. That's right, full of secrets and magic. But I will let you in on a little secret today while we're waiting for Ben. I've got a racehorse running today at 4.40 at Wyong. Ruby kisses. Get on it. Hot tip. A hot tip. Okay, so I'm going to introduce you to Ben Hoppitz, who's our head pit master here. He's been barbecuing pretty much all of his life. He cooks here all day long, goes home, and then cooks on the weather. So I'll introduce you to Ben. He'll tell you a little bit of a story about himself. Welcome, Ben. Thanks, Shannon. Welcome, Ben. Hi. Hi. Good. Nice to meet you all. So what do, what do we got? We're going to cook brisket here and we're going to slice that the correct way. I guess you're going to separate the point and the flat if you can run us through all that kind of stuff. We're not going to separate the point and the flat. That's not Ooh. what we do here. It's not how we serve it. But awesome. uh, we, we can definitely show you the, the difference between the two sections. That's something you'd probably do in a competition. 
in a competition uh, circuit, yeah, definitely separate the point and the flat because that's where you're going to get your burn ends from and uh, your, your slices of flat for the, the circuit. Yep, great. That's hot. So here we are, this is our, our service briskets. Since I've got the recording process. Yep, so uh, we run our smokers at 275 Fahrenheit. Um, and uh, we keep our briskets low, low and slow. So that um, it probably probably takes anywhere between 10 to 12 hours to cook one of these. And like Shannon said, we go through about 1.2 ton a week here. Uh, so we go through heaps and heaps of briskets, uh, less and less sleep. Uh, once, once our briskets get to about 170 Fahrenheit, we boat them like this. So we get our, our double wrap foil they wrap it all the way around nice and tight so that once they're once it's like that it retains all of the moisture so it doesn't just fall through the shelves uh like that so what do you bait it then instead of instead of wrapping uh find if, if you if you wrap your meat in foil you're going to get a steamed meat flavor and that's not what we're after uh when we boat it we leave the top exposed so we form a nice bark way better flavor and uh, great, great, great taste. Um, so what we do, once we serve it, get our brisket out. So, not sure if you can see that very well, but I think I can see the juices falling off. Yeah, really, yeah. Really it looks bark, delicious. All the way across that. Uh, what you're looking to do is slice directly across the grain. So when you when you put your brisket in there, you should be able to see uh, the grains running down this way, and that's what you're going to look for when you when you go to slice it. Uh, so you're going to go across your flat. And once you get to your point muscle, you're going to turn the brisket and start slicing across that muscle. Yep. It's going to choose a lot better when you're uh, eating thinner slices of uh, when you cut directly across the grain of your meat. Yeah. Can we cut it? No, just take a couple of slices. Yeah. So we'll just take a couple of slices so, for a bit of a sample for everybody. Right, and guys, I just so got another up, question. You want a sample. <laughs> Me. Shannon, we just got another question here from Pete McGilchrist, who's the ITMJ president. Um, so does boating reduce the amount of briskets that go into a stall? Does it reduce the amount of the stall? Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, when, you, when you boat it, the stall um, actually can drag on for a number of hours. So by boating it, uh, it, you, it actually helps it break through that stall period. So there generally isn't a stall at all um, once you get to that, because briskets will stall around about that 160, 170 Fahrenheit internal temperature. So that by boating it at that point, um, it starts, uh, it keeps climbing uh, to the temperature we're after. Cool, all right, thank you. All right, we'll slice a couple of slices there. So we'll sample it. Yeah, so. I use this this point of the brisket as my reference as to which way the, the grain goes. So I'm just going to go straight across at that point. Looks spectacular. Does look amazing. Did nice, you pretty. What type of wood we use, Ben? We use iron bark. So we use, it yeah. works well with every every meat flavour. Uh, goes well with seafood. Works well with lamb. Uh, chicken, everything. So that's why we use iron bark. It burns hot and it burns long and it's yep. locally sourced. I was going to say, as opposed to something like a mesquite or a hickory, um, yeah, iron bark is a, just a, a native. Flavors, yeah. Yep. Okay. All right. So at, at that point there, when you start, you turn your brisket and start slicing along the point muscle, like directly at 90 degrees off that cut and come back across that's where you're going to have a higher amount of, of uh, muscle on this side. So you're going to, you want to trim across, directly across the largest muscle at the time. Great. And there's the, 
the rest of the flat. Beautiful. So you can see where Shannon took that uh, hump off the top before. That's just this part here. That helps us get um, meat for our burgers and it also helps us keep our briskets in between our shelves without the top of the briskets catching. You get a nice more even cook. Awesome. Looks fabulous. Welcome yeah. back there for my dinner. And Pete's commented again that this is one of the times where Zoom is nowhere near as good as being there in real life. Yeah, because, yeah, <laughs> you'd probably end up tasting some of that instead of just looking at it, letting Shannon eat it. That's right. Delicious. You certainly look like your bark had uh, set really good on that one. The bark's amazing on that. And um, given the combination of um, the temperature we run at, um, the... Uh, the way we boat our briskets and the, the rub we use, the combination of the salt and the pepper, uh, the blend we use gives it a really, really unique bark and uh, yeah, a great crunch factor while, while keeping the brisket itself uh, very juicy. Excellent. Thanks, Ben. Yeah, and, and if you were going to do burn ends with that brisket, you take, you, you can just, there's two, two muscles in the brisket, so you've got the flat and the point muscle. And if you get your knife and, and just slice along where those two muscles join, you can separate it quite easily. And if you cube the, the point muscle up, um, put that back into the smoker with some barbecue sauce, uh, plenty of different recipes around, um, and just cook that again for probably an additional 15 to 20 minutes, you're gonna get beautiful burn ends. Delicious. Oh, yep. Put you back on the shelf. All right, I'm back, I'm back. So everyone here gets a sticker if you can come and get it. We've got some new stickers just released today for our butchery, which Very is pretty good. cool. Um, Shen, okay. another, another question here might be for Ben. How much rub should we put on? Is there too much, is too much never enough or is there a limit to rubs or is it just yeah, if, you're, if you're home I'll cooking your own preference? Yeah, I wouldn't go heavy on it. You just want to cover the meat slightly. You don't want to go too thick. Um, some people find our brisket a little bit peppery, but it's up to your own taste as well. It's the same as if you're eating chili. How much chili do you put in? So just a nice, a dust, a nice dusting. dusting. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you, you want you want to create that bark, so you want to cover the whole brisket. Okay, and I guess that's another reason, Shannon, why kosher salt gets used a lot more, isn't it? It's sort of that lower sodium flavour, so we can make sure we've got everything coated on that brisket. Um, with yes. salt and pepper, but we don't have that salt overload because of different crystal size as well and shape. No, exactly right. Like we don't want to be yeah, too salty unless we drink a beer. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Thank you. you. Okay, so that's our little um, beef. So we've done our brisket. So Ben spoke briefly about brisket burn ends. So what we're going to do now is some pork belly burnt ends. Okay, Yum. so a way to utilise the pork belly. This is very easy to do at home. Even if you haven't got a barbecue, you can, you can even do this in the oven. So what we've got here is a piece of rindless pork belly. Okay. So it's nice and fat. Okay. Which is, which is fine. Okay. So what we're going to do, just with our knife, we just want to cut nice even squares. With a nice sharp knife. So we just slice it down like so, so it's nice and even. Then we just turn it around. We just want to get nice cubes. Like pork belly is really good with the rind on, with the crackling and all that, but try it this way and cook, cook your crackling separate. If you do happen to buy it with the crackling on, take the crackling off to do these. Cook your crackling separate as a side dish. Because these are like the meat candy, they're unbelievable. So what we've got now is just little cubes of pork belly. Okay, so I'm just going to place them back in the bag. And we'll get our black bear rub, our pork rub. There's plenty on the market of rubs, okay? So we're just going to cover that, those pork belly cubes. Shake our bag a bit. Maybe a fraction more. Delicious.
Okay, so now we've just got a evenly coated cube of pork belly. Okay, Ben. Ben wants to come back and explain the cooking process because he reckons I don't know. I do pretend to know a lot of the time, but Ben's done this many more times than me. So I'll get Ben back and he, he can explain the cooking process of the um, pork belly burn ends. Hey guys, back again. So pork belly burn ends. So as Shannon's shown, nice little cube of pork belly. Um, I personally do them about twice as big as that because they're going to stay, they're going to shrink up as you cook them. So I'll probably go about, uh, about inch and a half or two inch by two inch of the pork belly all the way around. Give it a nice even coating like that because if you find once, once you cook them, they're going to shrink up. So something of that size is going to shrink up to about, about half of that by the time they get cooked. Um, so you're going to get those in a, in a, a, a nice medium hot part of the smoker. We, we, we run a 275, like I said. So you get that, you get that on our second shelf down and um, cook those till they're about 175, 180 Fahrenheit. And then remove those, put them onto a tray and then uh, sauce them up, roll them around in our barbecue sauce. Uh, one I like recently is our latte barbecue sauce, smoking latte, um, and then put them back in and just glaze those glaze those pork belly cubes for about another 20 minutes. Um, they're not going to increase massively in temperature, but what, what's going to happen is they're going to get super sticky, um, and that, that's that's the part you're looking for with your burn ends. So, um, so Ben, Ben, your, your, your sauce was called something latte. Does that mean it's got some coffee in it? Smoked latte. Okay. Yes, it does. Yeah. Cool. So, Where's so coffee oh, looks amazing. Yep. So, coffee is used. the coffee one, the, the chili one, and the original. Okay, coffee's used a bit in barbecue these days, isn't it? Yeah, there's uh, lots of different companies that got um, uh, coffee rubs and stuff like that out. Yeah, some of them are pretty good too. Um, but yeah, our, our sauces. One one thing we wanted to do with our sauce was make a, a nice um, coffee flavor barbecue sauce because that's. Originally, when we started, we were running uh, a very similar sauce. So we wanted to make one now that now that we were bottling our original sauce. Um, we wanted to uh, bottle one that resembled our original uh, coffee flavored barbecue sauce as well. Awesome. Thanks. Very good. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what we got here, we got our barbecue uh, pork, belly, pork belly burn ends. Um, like my so candy. As, as you can see, um, that's why I said go a little bit bigger on that on that cube and go to about two inch by two inch sort, sort of sizes because they'll shrink up pretty good. But um, they're just a uh, little, little meat jelly by the yeah, time yeah, It's great for a bar snack. Fantastic, just nibble on. And just quietly, as I said before, always cook a bit extra because these things are really good cold. Okay. 100% of the time. Anybody want one? <laughs> I'm sure everyone wants one. <laughs> that's, that's another downside. <laughs> so someone's just show? asked if you guys have an online shop where you can buy rubs and sauces from, and I, we, I would we say do. yes. Uh, someone else is available on our uh, website, blackbearbarbecue.com.au. Yep. Rubs, hats, shirts, knives. Yep. Lots of different shirt sizes. We've got uh, Victorian office knife packs. We've got Christmas packs with um, knives, rubs, sauces, shirts, everything. Uh, we've got lots of different packs for, for everyone. Um, we're also in there. Yeah, all, all the rubs, all, all available individually or uh, you know, discounted as, as combinations. Uh, mm -hmm. Hats, this particular hat. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our new style hats. Um, yeah, everything's on there. Uh, what else? Our classes, we just launched a couple of barbecue classes, uh, a butchery class as well, a salami making class. So uh, we've got lots of different things available on our uh, on our Facebook. You find all our updates and on the website, blackbearbarbecue.com.au is where you can uh, easily find us and pre-order food. If you want uh, Christmas, Christmas briskets, our Christmas briskets are going as well. We've got another few days before our cutoff. So... Great. 
And you sell all your own sources and that. Do you sell any other companies' rubs and sources or just mainly your own? Not online. No. Not online at the moment, no. Just our, just our own. Okay. Uh, in store, we've got um, Jess Brills rubs. We've got Moe's rubs. We've got uh, BRZ Foods rubs. Uh, we've got... Um, We've got Luton Booty, we've got his uh, rubs over there as well, yeah, and yeah. most sauce, and uh, yeah, and uh, emu rubs, some nice locally made rubs as well. Okay, great. I'll ch chuck you over to Shannon. Uh, Thank you. Answer any more questions about that, and he's about to break out some land. That's no, before you go, Ben. That's probably um, all Ben's looking for. He's got to go to the beauty salon. <laughs> he went there last week for two hours, and they said, Mate, you've got to stay for six. <laughs> So, appreciate your help, man. Thanks um, very much, Shannon. Yeah, no, no worries. Good to see you doing something. Thanks. And, um, thanks, thanks. Guys. thanks very much for having me on. Thank you. They look like a delicious little Christmas porky snack, Shannon, those oh, pork belly burn ends. They are really good. Like, everyone loves their, their pork with the crackling, as I say, but these are, like, as I said, sweet meat candy. Um, really, really tasty. And there's yeah. many, many recipes online that you can find. Cool. So, and you've got some lamb now. We we wanted to cut, make sure we covered all the three proteins that we we you know look and play with at ICMJ. So we've done beef and pork, and you're on to lamb now. If I had lamb, that would be a bit barbaric. Oh, terrible! <laughs> Another joke. Um, yes, I do. So what I'm going to show you now is a lamb pork order. So this is what we call a square cut pork order. So we've had our our neck removed. And our shank removed. Okay, so it's a square cut pork quarter. Normally, the butcher would cut this up into about a dozen barbecue chops or lamb pork quarter chops. But today, I'm going to bone it out, uh, roll it up. You can cook this as is on the bone. Um, you know, bone always adds flavour, but sometimes taking the bone out is a little bit more convenient. So, so that's what I'm going to do today. I'm just going to make what we call a, a little lamb pumpkin. First thing, I'm just going to remove a little bit of the fat from underneath. And then we've got our, our, our lamb rib bones here and our neck bone. So I'm just going to remove that. So when we're, when we're boning out any product, we want our knife to go into the bone. We don't want to destroy the eye of the meat. So our, our knife is always angling into that bone. I see there's a question there from Naomi. There is a question, sorry. Can you recommend a brand of smoker suitable for a beginner? Suitable for beginner? Yes, a Weber barbecue. Okay, where it's a kettle, they do have a new uh, smoke fire at the moment, which is... Um, it's probably around the two and a half thousand dollar mark, so it's not, it's not quite, it's not cheap, but it's very easy to use. But having fun with just a little kettle, you can get one second hand for fifty dollars, um, or even the side of the road. Sometimes you get lucky. Um, ben, who was just here with us, he's got fourteen barbecues at home, and thirteen of them are Weber's. <laughs> <laughs> and, and when you say when you say a Weber to Shannon, and I know you stressed it then, but a, a little kettle barbecue, not a not a Weber Q, the little gas ones, but you want a, a kettle that you can use right, um, right. heat beads well, or briquettes in. Yeah, the, the gas ones are fine and, and, and they serve a purpose. Um, I started cooking with charcoal when I went to the first meat stock uh, about five years ago now, and that's all I've cooked on uh, ever since. So, you know, I haven't used my beautiful big six burner gas barbecue that the wife brought for me for you know, over, over five years. Yeah. So, yeah, once, uh, once you do get that charcoal flavour, you'll keep going. Yeah. I have three kettles, three Weber kettles, all different colours, and that's that's where I started, um, and that's where I'm still at. I'd love to get something bigger, but they're a really great way to start. Yep. So what we're going to do now, I'll just remove this bone. And okay, so that, that bone's now removed. What we've got here is what we call our, our neck our neck fillet, or in, in barbecue terms, they call it the money muscle and the lamb. So I'm just going to separate this seam here. We're, we're butchering. A lot of the work's done with a knife, but also the hand does a lot too. So you've got to be able to find the seams and just pull the meat apart. So 
So just here we've got what we call the scapular bone. So I just need to follow that bone either side. Just come down now with a dagger, dagger style, and you just run your knife right up against that bone. And then I'll just come in here, it's what we call the ball and the cup joint. Just by flipping it over now, we can see we can see that cup and that ball. Inside that, you'll, you'll get a synovial fluid, which is a very sticky fluid, which keeps the joints moving. So now we'll just get our hand here and, and that bone will just pull out nice and clean like so. Always keep your bones. So this last bone that I'm going to remove, you've probably heard of the funny bone. Um, when you bump your elbow. Well, this is what it is called the humerus bone. Shannon, a couple of questions. Um, yeah. So we've got one here from Michelle. What do you look for in a good piece of lamb for smoking? Is it intramuscular fat, fat cover, or what are you guys looking for? Yeah, like I know there are some breeds of lamb. Um, don't ask me what they are. That really create a lot of intramuscular fat in the, in the lamb. But most of your lamb's not going to have a great deal. So what you really need is a, is a, you know, a nice fat coverage on the outside mm -hmm. and yeah, just, just a, nice, a nice pink colour. You, you don't want it too dark because then you know, you know it's going to be a little bit older. Okay, great. And one question from me. Ben mentioned that you guys are looking to do some butchery classes, was it? Is this something like boning out a shoulder of lamb that you'd be teaching in those sort of classes or is that yeah, so, advanced? Yeah, so we've, we've got a couple of classes um, online now. So... One of them is a whole lamb breakdown one-on-one -on -one, and you get to take a side of the lamb home. So you'll be working alongside me and, and doing a little bit of hands-on on work. Um, then we have our salami and sausage making class. And we're also going to do a meat camp where you're going to get involved or you know, see a lot of butchering get done, some asado cross cooking, over the flame cooking, low and slow cooking, a whole range of products, so bacon, ham, um, pancetta, all that getting made. So it's a full day, 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. Can you sign me up now, please? <laughs> can I sign you up now? You can come and assist. I'll need an assistant. Oh, happy to. Happy to. Okay, so to... we're taking the bones out of our forequarter. Okay, we can use these for stock. But don't use this one for stock. Okay, this is our humerus bone. If you use this, you'll end up being the laughing stock. <laughs> Terrible. <laughs> Well, they get better, don't they? Boom, boom. <laughs> okay. I'll just need it back in the tech. Okay, we're just going to have get our butcher's twine. If you haven't got any of this in the kitchen, go to your butcher and ask him to order one in for you. Always handy to have. Okay? When I say go to your butcher, very important to have a relationship with your butcher. Oh no, he froze. Sorry, everyone, it looks like Shannon has frozen there. We'll just give him a few seconds to see if he comes back. So I'm not sure if everyone else can hear me here, but I'm sure what Shannon's trying to explain here is that for everyone that's sort of um, taken up competition barbecuing and are very much lovers of meat, it's a really good idea to get a to build a relationship with your butcher. Um, you're able to um, get the products in that you want. Like Shannon said, they can order you in those bigger grain-fed, fattier briskets that can handle the smoke and the time and the temperature when we're wanting to offset barbecue something. Um, so really important that we can um, build that relationship with our butcher and they're really more than happy generally to, to try and source the products that we're after, um, whether it is sort of, you know, different breeds of lamb, you know, those, those big grain-fed briskets uh, or any products that you might want. So, um, you know, Boston, Boston butts when it comes to pork and different cuts that we can use for smoking. So um, 
Um, looks like we've unfortunately lost Shannon there for a little bit, but um, any other questions that we can fire through? Hello, are we there? We got you back, Shan. I think I've semi-answered the question for you about trying to build a really good relationship with your butcher. So okay, you can get thank the you very much for that. That you, that you want. Believe it or not, my phone overheated. <laughs> I don't know. It's never happened before. It's probably looking at me all the time. That's got to be it. Yep. <laughs> okay. Before we get any more failure. So we've got our butcher's twine. It's nice and strong. Okay. So what we're going to do now, we're just going to roll our forequarter into a pumpkin. So we've got our string, okay? So we've got our, our loose end here. What we need to do is just go over and back under the loop. So another loop, over and back under. We just do that twice, and then we just give it a quick snap. And we just tie it off. Shannon, um, Curie's mentioned that it was too many good jokes and your phone couldn't handle it. Oh, I think that could be it too. <laughs> so we're just we're just gonna go like across one side lengthways, turn it around and come back on the other side. This is a great skill to do at home. You know, it's, it's easy enough to get your butcher to, to roll it for you, but to have this skill, it's not overly hard, it does take a bit of practice. But if you've got the time, give it a go yourself. So you can see there I've just got the four squares now. So now I'm just going to come across diagonally. So Shannon, tell us, you, I know that you've got your own um, personal Instagram too, that you post a lot of photos from your travels around the world with the World Butchers Challenge and with meat stock and all the butchery sort of um, butcher wars and things like that. Do you want to tell us a bit about your content and what your handles and things are? I certainly can. I'll just get this lot done. Yeah, so my Instagram account is all things me. Um, I've had it up and running for a few years now. So the World Butcher Challenge is a great event. I'm, I'm actually not involved with that at the moment, um, but I am heavily involved with the Butcher Wars, um, which is an event run at Meatstock where we have 30 butchers up on stage. Um, they get half an hour to do a side of lamb and half a saddle of pork. Amazing if you haven't seen it. All right, it's absolutely a great event. So we're lucky enough to have some Brazilians come over um, last year, no, year before last. Um, they came over to Sydney. So we thought we'll, if they put the effort in to come here, we should put the effort to go over there. So unfortunately, 13 of us had to go over to Brazil. And we went to an event called Shuriscato which is a two-day event. Entry is probably about a week's wage for a lot of Brazilians, so it's, it's quite expensive. But it's, it's an event you go to that all you can eat and all you can drink. I think most people would like an event like that. I did. I loved it. Yeah. Um, you know, butchers over there are treated like rock stars. You know, they're probably more respected than a lot of doctors. Um, the meat industry is massive over in Brazil. and We, was, we also popped into Argentina and Chile. Um, and everywhere we went, we went to butcher shops, we went to restaurants, um, and the hospitality that we received from those guys was absolutely amazing. Mm. It really, really was. So, and all, I've also just opened up the butchery here, so we've got our, our Facebook page here, Black Bear Boutique Butchery, um, which is going quite strong. In our, in our second week of business, mm -hmm. um, we're, we're going quite well. And Ben is HD Division. Okay, his Instagram. You want to follow him too. He puts up some really amazing photos. So we've got our little lamb pump, pumpkin now. Okay, so this is going to be a lot easier to carve. Um, we're going to cook that slowly, so we you know nearly pull it apart. We wouldn't have to carve it. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get our black bear lamb rub, another plug. Okay, we're just going to sprinkle that on. This is a very strong rub, so you don't need a great deal of it. Like the rubs, you know, our rub here is $17 a jar. Um, my good friend Jess, her rub is about $26 a jar. It's a bit bigger. And a lot of, a lot of people think, wow, that's expensive. But you, you're going to get a good 12 cooks out of it. So you're looking at a dollar a cook to flavour your meat. So it's well worth it. 
to get that, you know, that professional rub. So we're just going to get a little bit of flavour in there with our seasoning. Just put a little pocket in there. And a little stick of rosemary in like so. So now we've got a beautiful little lamb pumpkin. Um, as I said, easy to cook and easy for you guys to try at home. That's great, Shen. Love now, it. I haven't got a Christmas hand because they've all been sold. I, I did want to give you a little demonstration on a, on a Christmas ham, but I'm happy enough to talk, talk you, you through that. Um, if you get a glazer ham at home, what you need to do is remove the rind, leaving as much fat as possible as you can on. And then we just score the fat, not going too deep into the meat. We don't want to go into the meat. Uh, my favourite glaze when I'm glazing a ham is brown sugar and ginger beer. So we're looking at a cup of each. We just mix that up. We glaze the ham before we put it in. We keep some of that glaze aside. Every 20 minutes or so, we just add some glaze to it, brush some glaze on. And to me, that's the most flavoursome type of ham glaze there is. There's many out there. You know, Google it, whatever you want. Cooking time for the lamb, is that right from Sam? From Sean, cooking time and temp for the lamb, please, Shannon. Okay, so cooking time. A lot of people ask, how long does it take to cook? The answer is until it's done. Okay, so I would say if you're doing this in the oven, we'll, we'll get away from the barbecue for a little bit. If you're doing this in the oven, you go 180 probably for about an hour and 28 minutes. Okay, yep. um, you want to get the internal temperature of about 190 Fahrenheit and make sure you let the lamb rest. Anything low and slow, you've got to let it rest. Even hot and fast, like a steak, you've got to let it rest for, you know, five or ten minutes. But if you're doing low and slow, like a brisket, we won't slice a brisket up here until it's rested for four hours. Yeah. So, so we've got a, a sham that we put it in there. But at home, you can wrap it up in a tea towel, place it in an esky, and it will keep there and hold temperature for four hours. Mm -hmm. And, and Shannon, in barbecue, we, we tend to talk a lot more in Fahrenheit, which I know confuses people. But the reason for that is it's, it's a bigger scale, isn't it? So our increments are smaller. Is that what you guys use Fahrenheit more? Or? Yeah, well, yes. But also a lot of the recipes and a lot of the techniques are coming from America. We're doing American low and slow. So that they invented this, you know, cooking a brisket low and slow. So we're using their Fahrenheit. But in saying that... Yep. We still use kilos, not pounds. So it does get a little bit confusing. A lot of, you know, there's been a whole lot of stuff on Facebook. You know, why do you use Celsius? Why do you use Fahrenheit? Um, you know, just, if you're not sure, just Google it. Great. All right, is there any other questions from, from those viewing? Um, while we've still got Shannon for a couple of minutes, we'll try and finish on time. I, I will um, let everyone know we'll send out a link to a survey just as we finish this. And we'd really, really appreciate if everyone that was um, viewing and listening and watching in could participate please in that nice. survey. Please be nice to Shannon and please be nice to myself. But any, any other questions? I think there's some really, really great ideas there, Shannon, that everyone can try at home. They can pop in and see you guys if they're based in Sydney and pick up stuff from the butcher shop or cook products for Sydney. Sounds like they can um, order briskets from you guys. So use of leftovers, um, Shannon. Okay, yes, sure. Use of leftovers. I forgot to mention that, sorry. So a lot of people when they're leftovers, you know, they'll just store it up and you know, they might heat it up the next day. Um, I like to mix this. We'll, we'll talk brisket now. If you've got leftover brisket, okay, add it to some gravy, get yourself a pie maker. If you've got a kilo left, you know, make, make half a dozen pies, put them in the freezer, they're going to be sensational. Okay. Also, don't be afraid to, when you're in the supermarket to get some spring roll wrappers. So I'm randomly trying something completely different off the red meat scale uh, this year for Christmas. I know I'm going to be attempting to smoke a whole trout. Um, on a timber board in a smoker and um, see how that goes for Christmas lunch. Um, there's a question here. Mel, I will try and get that to Shannon, but um, if everyone else wants to share in the group, what, what are you going to be cooking for Christmas? I think that's a really nice way to finish off today. So, yeah, 
I'm, I'm going to try cooking a side of trout, and if I can't get that, will be salmon. So, Michelle, I can probably have a crack at answering your question around are barbecue competitions big in Australia? Uh, yes, they have been become quite big in the country. There's there's quite a circuit. Um, the Australasian Barbecue Alliance body that um, two guys from Port Macquarie and Jess Pryles actually co-founded, and they sanction competitions for low and slow barbecue around the country. Um, they sanction the competitions that are held at meat stock for barbecue war. So Hannah was talking about butcher wars. They have all different types of comps, so barbecue wars, butcher wars, um, barber wars, lots of different things, but um, they sanction the contest there. Um, the Black Bear Barbecue guys actually run what we call the Invitational every year uh, or show down in the showgrounds. They are the governing body for that as well. Um, but big barbecue comps all around the country um, in nearly every state has competitions, but they're very big on the east coast of Australia through your capital cities and regional areas. So quite often ran in, run in conjunction with a festival or a, uh, a music event, um, definitely get along. But if you're a meat person or a food person, definitely try and get to um, one of the meat stocks. Um, they're held in Sydney, Melbourne and in um, New Zealand. Uh, so try and get along to one of those. They were obviously all off the agenda this year, but I think all the dates have been set for those events. So they're a really big eye opener um, of the different things that we can do with um, product everyone working in the meat industry. So Naomi, we can definitely ask Shannon that question. He does do some external events and, and uh, field days and things like that. Um, I was going to actually talk to Shannon or get him to talk about it too. He's actually a um, TAFE New South Wales butcher teacher. He teaches at TAFE amongst all these, the other things he does in his spare time, but um, definitely is more than happy to do external events and field days. I think you'll find because he, he really very much is one of the most passionate people in the meat industry on the butchery side for sure. Is that better? Yes, that's we got you, Shan. Sorry about that. So the problem was we had the phone on the computer to so hold it up and the computer overheated the phone. Oh, okay. So, so a couple of questions. I've, Just I've had to put the phone in the freezer. <laughs> that's right. A couple of questions for you. What will you be having for Christmas lunch? Uh, I'll have a traditional ham, um, which I'll glaze. And I'll probably have some roast pork as well. Okay. Um, so I tend to stay away from the turkey. Um, I will probably have turkey, even though I'm not American, but I'll have turkey for Thanksgiving. Um, yeah, but a lot, of the, a lot of the time on Christmas, I won't have turkey. But in saying that, I've probably got about 15, 20 people coming over and everyone brings something. So it's a bit of a mixture. Um, I've always got the expensive meat to bring. Great. There was another question from Michelle, which I think I hopefully have answered, but are barbecue competitions big in Australia? Are barbecue competitions big in Australia? Um, they are very big, probably not as big as they are in other countries in America as such, um, but they are growing. We've got um, you know, some large events like meat stock. Um, the boys here at Black Bear put on the showdown, the showground uh, last year, which was a great event. Um, there's also a little a growing, very big, is the SCA competition. Yes. So the SCA is the State Cook-Off Association. Um, there's usually on their own, it's a smaller competition, but they've also joined the larger competitions and that's amazing. And, you know, it's good morale. All the teams get on together. There's no politics. Everyone loves each other. Um, yeah, if you get a chance to go to a competition and have a look, do it. And even more so, put your hand up to judge if you can. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, and there's a question from Naomi. Um, do you attend many field days and are you happy to do demonstrations at events? Yes, I do. Yes, I've, um, I, I do quite a few demonstrations at the Lock Cordon Bleu Cooking School um, for the international chefs, which I'd really love doing. Um, yeah, and I'm happy to travel around the countryside when I get a bit of time and, and demonstrate and, and pass on my knowledge. Um, I really love teaching people, so I am a TAFE teacher as well. I teach game meat harvesting, so I was lucky enough last year to go to Broken Hill and... Um, I had a, a group of 35 people and it was probably the life-changing experience. It was, you know, sitting in the bush with a fire, teaching them how to harvest kangaroos. It was really amazing. 
Great stuff. Well, thank you very, very much, Shannon. We um, might call it a day there, but we really appreciate your time, Chop's time, um, all the boys' time there at Black Bear, especially if it's not a normal trade day for you guys. Um, appreciate the, your product that you showed us and um, I guess wish everyone a Merry Christmas and thank you for showing us some really interesting ideas for our Christmas tables and let's hope that anyone in Sydney pops in to hopefully see you guys before before Christmas. Yes, for sure. If you've got any questions, don't hesitate to ask me on Instagram, all things meet. Um, thank you very much for having me. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And Merry Christmas to all. Have the big fat fella comes. Thanks, Shan. Thank you. Take care, thank all. you, everyone. Bye. Toodaloo.